Knowing like the Velocity team and Liberation, <laughs> they both favor Sky a lot, which is why we see here Lib um, Velocity first ban out coming is Sky. So this leaves Liberation with like they know that they're gonna be picking second. They know that they're gonna have that ability to counter, and I think. As long as they're able to secure themselves somebody that's more mid to late scaling, they have a great advantage. All right, Catherine off the board. So with Catherine off the board, I think they're going to try and grab somebody off like Scarf uh, for liberation. And once again, the story of the day, we've said it time and time again, we've expected Adagio to be banned and he hasn't. Just really quick, after seeing so many matches so far, why do you think Adagio is being left open? Why have other things been a higher priority? Because, like we saw with Gangstar Sirius banning out that Catherine, the same can be said for Liberation X. They have a composition in mind already, and they want to be able to ban out somebody that's most effective against them. All right, we're waiting for Liberation X first pick. It will be Arden. E36 will be on that Arden. And uh, tell me, is there any contrast between the play of E36 and Marto? Anything to keep our eye on? They both have very similar styles of play, where they're always traveling with uh, status baked in that jungle. But what's gonna really come down to is the itemization. Um, I do notice that E36 has a more un an unorthodox style of building for his roamers where he prioritizes grabbing those early tier three um, defensive and then he tends to like go off either building very strong in terms of grabbing utility items or just grabbing those early damage items for his team. Okay, so a couple of really interesting things here. First, the Black Feather pick, that might even suggest status bake moves up to lane, or do you think it's gonna be on T Tigers? I think T Tigers is gonna get this scarf for the last pick with status bake running Black Feather in that jungle. But right now they're highlighting Glaive, so we can't say for sure. But running a three melee against a pretty much a buff comp where they're dependent on Vox, it's gonna be very hard. All right, we'll have to wait and see what happened there. But the on the other side, uh, the pick there, any thoughts on that? So far, like we've only seen them highlight this scarf. And I think this composition works out really well for them. But they're going to have a lot of trouble handling that early game pressure. You have that Adagio and that Vox together. With that buff comp, we saw the potential that Vox has. And this is like one of the, the compositions that Kinetic was very well known for well, when they took velocity. out Vox. No, this is Kinetic. Oh, you're Kinetic. Oh, no, so you're, you're expanding Kinetic, to the entire Halcyon Hammers yeah. uh, organization. It's a big uh, tournament for them, uh, bringing two teams, Halcyon Hammers. And you know what? D'Enzio, uh, if there was one thing, if, I, if, if you're going into a game and there's one hero that you want to take D'Enzio off of, it is Vox. Uh, you can stand at base and watch him 1v3 people with Vox. Do you think he's the best Vox in North America right now? Um, to be honest, he's probably one of the top three. Um, it's very hard to say because when it comes down to mechanics, there's like the top five are like very similar in terms of how they execute it, how they play it out. But then it also comes down to like knowing exactly when to rotate, positioning themselves in that late game where death timers really count. And with the Velocity team being a more younger team and not having as much experience as the Liberation X team, so far, everything coming out of D'Enzio or Aloha in this Vox has been amazing. Okay, we haven't talked much about Veins. What does he bring to the team? And uh, kind of how does that play into the way Halcyon or Hammer's Velocity plays? So Veins is somebody that I started playing before he, when he was coming up in the community. And he had like that natural sense of play style where his map awareness was always on point. And he makes like innovative ways to actually for his team to approach the jungle. And this is going to be a great chance for them where as if they're able to take control of the Liberation X jungle, it's going to make it very easy on whoever is laning for them. All right. So final thoughts, uh, Halcyon Hammer's Velocity, their play style into Liberation X. Uh, what happens when they clash? I think with this game, Velocity is going to take the lead early. Um, but if the Liberation X team can uh, hold out, preserve a little bit, they'll have the late game for sure. All right. Let's throw to our casters for this big match. Uh, take it away, guys. All right, thank you very much, Playoff Beard and Rome. I'm excited to get into this game between Liber X, Liberation X, who of course were formerly, uh, you know, the champions from Autumn and Halcyon Hammer's Velocity. My name is Action Jackson. I got Vettius next to me. We're gonna be hopping in the game. Yes, we are, ladies and gentlemen. We have come across the pond to cast a bit of North American Vainglory. We're certainly excited to see, and already we can see a bit of action kicking off in the early game. Yeah, lots of action early on here. You see Halcyon Hammer's, their health bar is sitting a little bit lower than that of Liberation X. So we might see some more aggression here. At the moment, they're just backing away, taking their camps and playing safe. All right, so 
Uh, just to give a bit of a recap of the compositions, we're seeing for the side of Velocity, we've got the Vox Fortress and the Adagio. So, going to be playing very much around this Vox, heading towards that mid to late game, whereas Liberation X, they did actually pick up the Rhyme. So I'm quite excited to see how this is going to work in this composition as T-Tigers, he actually takes a bit of harassment up in the lane. Yeah, but I think he's going to be all right, at least for now. You can see E36 is hovering around here. He's going to be able to help T-Tigers out if he ever wants to go aggressive. On the flip side, we've got Aloha sticking with his jungler veins at the moment. And uh, they do have maybe the potential to go for a fight here. Status Baked is going to scare yep. them off a little bit with the Winter Spire. But they're going to go for the fight here. It looks like Aloha is taking a lot of damage, but their turnaround on the Status Baked is huge. Veins and Aloha are going to find that one. First Blood going the way of Velocity. Right now, they're going for even more here. D'Enzio, he's run down from the lane. It's a quick two kills going the way of Velocity. Great kiting coming out from Aloha. You could see Status Baked doing his best to try and close the gap and when you have that support from the un you it, you know you'd expect to be able to do it but he wasn't quite able to pull it off status bait needs to be careful now though oh he really does and this could be a bad spot for him he's gonna try and use his boots to speed away vanguard just in time as well veins he wants to go for that steal and i believe he found it there so very nice work by halcyon hammers velocity in this early game they're putting on a lot of pressure t tigers actually struggling oh there's a kill on the other side as well veins finds himself another one along with aloha you can see Aloha wants more on the E36, can't quite close that distance. The turret is going to help him get out of there. Velocity want to send a message to the reigning North American champions. You guys might be the champions for now, but we are here to play. And with this 3-0 early game, they are doing it in commanding fashion. This Aloha is not afraid to go aggressive. And the way he plays as Adagio is phenomenal. 2-0 and 1, and they're looking for more. Yeah, they are. I don't think they're going to find T-Tigers. He manages to get under his turret. Status Baked going very deep here. I would argue too deep, and in fact, he does go down. Aloha picking up lots of kills in this early game. Vayne just barely able to get out of that one. Wow, I'm not entirely sure what Status Baked is trying to do in this early game. You're playing the Rhyme. It takes you a little while to ramp up. Yes, we are on patch 1.15, which means he has had a couple buffs, but it's more towards that late game point. He has better skating. His base stats are slightly higher. But you still need to get to that point. And in this early game, you just don't have the damage. And when you get paired up against a fortress, there's very little you're going to be able to do in the early game. Speaking of fortress, maybe he wants to go up against T-Tigers? I think he's just going to play this one safe. Make sure that that farm isn't going to waste. You want someone pretty much catching every single wave so you're being efficient with it. And he is going to be in position to do just that when he sees Dienzo isn't able to make it to one of those creeps. So looking across the board here, we do have the nice lead building up for HH velocity it's in a 7.3k to the 6.7 of liberation x the question is can they keep this ball rolling obviously t tigers on that black feather are going to be a big threat moving into the later stages of the game velocity want to keep making these plays but this time it's a three versus three how are they going to do here status big look at the burst damage going down on them veins nearly falls has to leave dienzio dives very deep for the kill he is pretty low but he's got back up to the teammates finally falls velocity they have bitten off more than they can chew. Aloha wants to return on the E36. He cannot find it. And that's going to be Liberation X with an ace less than five minutes into the game. So you have to give credit to Status Baked in that fight because he is on the front line and you have to realize that Rhyme is surprisingly tanky with the fortified health that he has available to him. And what he did is tank the majority of the damage coming out from Velocity, retreat, and force the Enzio to follow him right into the arms of T-Tigers. And that just allowed him to get all those Heartbreak stacks up, and then he was just doing so much damage on the back line. Really nice play from Status Bait to just bait the main damage dealers from Velocity straight into Liberation X and turn around the team fight. Yeah, it was a really, really well played fight by Liberation X, but on the flip side, Velocity got to be careful about taking things too far that yeah. they can't afford to. You know, they have a nice lead. You don't necessarily have to go for the hyper aggressive plays that are going to put your team at risk. You'd already forced Status Bait back at that point. You could have just turned it attention to T-Tigers, or maybe even with the numbers advantage, try and push an objective. But as you were rightly saying, they just over-aggressed. They got a little bit too greedy for that kill. And as a rising team, you know, you have to wonder, is the pressure of the stage getting to them a little bit? Do they just want to try and show off as T-Tigers? He's just going to rose offensive out of that one. But 
uh, we do have to think about these new teams coming here to the stage. We really do. With reference to T Tigers in the top lane, though, now that he's hit level six and has Rose Offensive, he's going to be much, much safer against the constant pressure that Velocity have been applying to him up until this point. He can have two charges of that, which means very frequently he's going to be able to get away from ganks. And I mean, just looking at the farm, he's sitting at 63 to the 46 of Dienzio. So he, even with all this pressure, he's done a fantastic job of staying relevant in this lane. And you can see why T-Tigers is one of the famed laners here in North America. Yeah, and actually, if we're looking back at the last championships, he wasn't able to make it until the last day. So his team kind of had to fight without him. This yeah. time, he's here from the beginning. And I'm sure Liberation X want to show that they can have a very good performance when they have all of their starters at the beginning of the tournament. Right now, though, look at how deep they are going for Aloha. He is going to be able to heal up a little bit. We've got the rotation coming through from Veins and Dienzio. They're going to start this fight oh. off. That's the way for it. Aloha on the back line. Oh. taking a lot of damage from T-Tigers. Dienzio goes down as well. Aloha has made it to the turret, but he finally falls. Liberation X have definitely turned this early game around. Gold dead even. So Liberation X have now got to a point that they've completed a couple of items. They've gone to the levels that they need, and they can really start putting up a fight against Velocity. What a fantastic Valkyrie coming out from Rhyme to just deny any uh, impact Veins was able to have. They shut him down, deleted him, and while that was going on, you see T-Tigers sitting on the back line and dealing with Aloha by himself. Liberation X are just coming into these fights and they are playing them perfectly. They really are, and they get a big gold mine off the back of that, somewhere in the realms of 240 gold. T-Tigers gotta be careful about being caught here, though. He is gonna walk right in that bush. E36 has his back, but are they gonna be able to get away here? T-Tigers oh. turns around for the on point. He's gonna oh. dash. Oh, that was absolutely awesome play from T-Tigers. He is he's bleeding here. He might be able to get away. He's got to attack the wolf. He finally does it. On the flip side, though, you can see that E36 does fall, so it's not free for them. T-Tigers actually went down to a bleed stack on the backside. State is baked in a bad spot. It's an ace on the flip side. Velocity bringing things back a little bit here. So I was so concentrated on T-Tigers getting away. He dashed to the wolf to give him space to escape, and then he dies at the end to a bleed. Very unfortunate, so but you could see the arm doing what he could to try and kite around the outside uh, And he ended up just getting solo killed by Dienzio, which was a little bit unfortunate Status bait also getting caught out of position trying to escape trying to provide peel for his team Wasn't enough ends up dropping giving over the ace giving over a tower to HH velocity And you can see why playoff bid was so excited about this game very back and forth between the rising stars of velocity and the raiding champs of Liberation X Yeah, I mean at least on paper this is one of the two closer series for today. You know, previously we had first versus eight, then we had second versus seventh. This is a little bit closer on paper, and you can see that these teams are trading blows back and forth. Neither one of them is really um, a head and shoulders, you know, over the other. And it's going to be interesting as the game progresses, though. Liberation X, they can scale very hard, um, which normally, I mean, a scalar is a little bit less than a vector, but they're doing pretty good this time. Yeah, they, they certainly are. We'll have to see which uh, direction they end up going in from this point on. As uh, Dienzio, he's going to try and defend this turret one versus three. He has completed the alternating current, so he's really waiting for that two item power spike before he really starts to do damage, but Aloha now completed the Shatter Glass means that uh, you have to respect the amount of damage that this Vox is going to be able to put out at this point in the game, but Speaking of damage, have a look at T-Tigers. He's completed the uh, Serpent's Mask. Status Baked has completed the Frostburn. So there is going to be a lot of utility as well as a lot of damage coming out from this Liberation X side as well. It's going to get very messy in terms of the skirmishes that we're going to be seeing at this point in the game. And I am super excited for it. Oh man, you know me, I'm Action Jackson. I like the action-packed fights, and I'm sure we're going to be getting some of those as we move forward here. Right now, just having a look at the map, Goldmine getting pretty full, so we might see some teams put uh, pressure onto that soon. Gold-wise, between the teams, we're seeing only a 400 gold lead to Velocity, so it's nothing tremendous, and they've got to be careful as the slightly earlier 
team with this fortress uh, that they don't get out scaled too quickly. Attack the That's going to be attack of the pack. They want to go for a fight here. Everyone very grouped up. Oh. Big Valkyrie coming through out of state is picked. Look at the damage on D'Enzio as well. This could be bad. Both the damage threats still alive for Liberation X. Status Baked could go down to another bleed. He's burning a little bit as well Ooh. on the backside. But it looks like he's going to be able to get out of there. So overall, that is going to be a one for two trade. Liberation X coming out the better. So that whole fight was very much about Liberation X trying to kill D'Enzio and Velocity trying to keep D'Enzio alive. And they were doing a good job at the start, but they just couldn't deal with the damage from both T-Tigers and Status Baked. And with D'Enzio out of the fight, it was simply a matter of, okay, guys, we have to retreat. Our main damage dealer is done. And so they end up losing veins, but it was still a very unfortunate fight for Velocity. So Liberation X, they now get themselves a return turret. They get themselves a couple of extra kills, and they are able to come out ahead in that, in that team fight pretty commandingly. I mean, they've actually had about a 1,500 gold swing just from that fight, and that is substantial. The majority of the money came from the turret kill, which is very big. Now that they're even, that gold lead actually means a little bit more because they've got the same resources to work with on the map. Very well played by LibX, and you can see Velocity struggling to make the same kind of plays they were doing earlier on in the game. They haven't found the opportunities that were afforded to them earlier when T-Tigers, for example, didn't have Rose Offensive available. No, they certainly... You could see they tried to put pressure down onto T-Tigers, but given that he's only died once this game, that pressure didn't really amount to anything. One thing you got to realize about Velocity, too, is their team likes to dive onto you a decent amount, at least at this stage in the game when you've got the Fortress trying to make the aggressive play and they tend to group up for the Valkyries coming out of status pick, which just makes it very easy for him to land a big ultimate. It, yeah, the, this is the great the, the thing about Liberation X is if you dive onto this lineup, you, you're basically doing what you want them to do. So you, you want to try and kite around these fights as Vayne's getting collapsed on. He is. He's going to be slowed up a little bit by T-Tigers. Look at the damage that's coming through. Vayne's, I don't know if he's going to be able to get out of this one. T-Tigers finds it. He's going to use that Rose Offensive to try and get away. He's got a Reflex Block Shield in addition to that. So a quick pick up for Liberation X. They're in a great position to find something more off the back of this. So double Fountain of Renewal used at the same time. You can hit... I can hear Bacon screaming in the background, <laughs> getting so annoyed as to how uh, inefficient that is. But still, good news from Liberation X to get that kill and get out. They're going to secure themselves the gold mine off the back of it. And it was just Liberation X understanding their boundaries. They realized that all three members of Velocity weren't there. They had the damage to go for that dive. And even though Status Bacon missed his Valkyrie, it was still enough for Liberation X to guarantee themselves the kill. And if you just look at the gold difference now, Liberation X are really starting to gain that momentum that works very nicely with their composition reaching this point in the game. Yeah, I mean, I think the ray of hope here for Velocity is definitely D'Enzio. If he can scale a little bit more, maybe kite around in these fights, if they change how they're playing them and focus more on being defensive and keeping D'Enzio alive, maybe they can make it happen. The problem is getting through status baked in an elongated fight is very, very difficult because the fortified health just keeps on coming in. So, Broken Myth now completed for D'Enzio. This is the point in the game in which he is really going to start to hurt, but Broken Myth also picked up for Status Baked, so both Crystal Powers going to be doing a lot of damage at this point. Yeah, absolutely. They're going to be hitting very, very hard. Liberation X have grouped up in the lane now. They look like they might be trying to find an opportunity to push more, go for a turret, something like that. As it currently stands, though, just the presence of three members of Velocity in the lane is going to dissuade them from doing that. So you can see that Liberation X, they're not so far ahead that they're willing to, you know, not respect Velocity in these fights. Yeah, it's uh, just looking at the map right now, Velocity do have the positional advantage given that they have the minions pushing in their favor um, and they're pushing towards the next turret of Liberation X. But both teams quite hesitant to try and force anything and if really anybody's going to be the aggressors, it has to be Liberation X, but that sort of works nicely for Velocity because all they want to do is kite back in these engagements. They just want to keep the NZO alive, but they're actually the ones looking for the fight. Velocity, this is a bold move going for a fight like this. T-Tigers doing a lot of damage here. That's going to be the gauntlet thrown down. Big damage out of status pick, but T-Tigers is the first to fall. E36 doing a great job on the side, but not enough. Status pick goes down. Velocity, they pick up the fight. So that 
from Velocity was so smart. They go for the engagement with Veins, but only Veins. Dienzio and Aloha sit on the back line because they know T-Tigers is going to aggressively go for that dive. And so the peel is there for the main damage dealer of Velocity. Dienzio is able to kite around the Black Feather, and by shutting down Black Feather and preventing Status Big from even getting involved in the fight was just perfect execution from Velocity. They guarantee, or they get themselves the ace, they get themselves a turret, and they're going to get themselves a Kraken, which is going to give them a massive swing in this game one of this series. Yeah, and in addition to that, I feel like they have a great team to actually play around Kraken when it's pushing. They should be able to really uh, put pressure on the turret from a safe distance and then if Liberation X try and initiate which we haven't seen much of yet they're going to be in a nice position to kite back from it that was a well played fight from Velocity they need to keep doing more of the same Liberation X they're not even venturing out of their base they know they need to deal with this crack and push as soon as possible yeah, they do have relatively good wave clear. It's, you know, obviously it's not the strongest, but it, it should be enough to at least deal with the minion sitting on the base. But I don't know how quickly they're going to be able to take the crack in. Let's see how Velocity t decides to play around this. It's all going to be about status fake, just spamming those Winter Spires, trying to kill the Kraken as quickly as possible. T-Tigers is doing a decent amount of damage to the backline, yeah. just sort of ambiently. Right now, though, Veins looks like he wants to turn this one around and maybe go for an initiation. Look at Dienzio's damage. He's got to be careful. He finds wow. the silence. He's kiting around. We're going to see the art and ultimate it doesn't do enough though dienzio massive plays coming out of him velocity this could be a game ending push against the former champions liberation X. it certainly could be i think that they are going to be able to do it they've gone themselves the ace they have the kraken this is going to be game one going over to hh velocity and what a way to do it very back and forth in the early game but when they finally get the team fight that they needed they propel to victory